A political column in Rolling Stone magazine is suggesting America's millennial generation should push for, quote, a fair society. And this is a quote. As much as unemployment blows, so do jobs. What if people didn't have to work to survive? Is this a joke? Uh, no, I mean, it isn't. This is actually how a lot of millennials think. And this is how the Occupy Wall Street movement thinks. This is a group of people who graduated with the de degrees in lesbian dance theory and then were surprised when they didn't get a six-figure paycheck out of college. So in the very rare case where <coughs> a leftist uses evidence, logic, and empiricism, mm -hmm. um, how do I combat like statistics they propose? Who is it and when has it happened ever? I agree with you that like biologically a man is a man and a woman is a woman. I was just wondering what you see the detriment of society, like why we can't like let a transgender like woman be called she or something. Because just, it is a lie. The fact is that workers everywhere in the nation need a higher minimum wage and workers everywhere are inspired by what's happened so far in Seattle and all eyes are in Seattle are on Seattle. Workers everywhere are feeling empowered by how much workers in Seattle are fighting for their rights. So it is nothing to do with Seattle zip code. We need this to happen everywhere. But what's wrong with starting with Seattle? It's true, you might say that workers of the world, for lack of a better word, are unite, are uniting. Um, you know, as, 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 far as, as far as the... Uh, as it's easy to make facetious comments, it's, easy to, it's very hard to dispute data. Well, since you provided no data in that actual answer, it's not that difficult. In your video where you debunk white privilege, you talk about how white privilege is a made up term by privileged minorities, so I was wondering if you can elaborate on some of the privileges that you think minority groups have. Okay, so for in privileges in law, so when I, when I say privilege, I'm actually going to talk about legal standing. Okay, so affirmative action is a privilege. Affirmative action is a privilege. Subprime mortgage is designed to appeal to minority loan, to minority recipients without proper qualifications, that, that is a privilege. Now, those are a couple examples of, of privilege. Privilege would also be the, the police being told that they can't police in communities the same way they would in other communities because they don't understand the problems of minority communities. That's privilege. It's, and by the way, these privileges are not helpful, but these are but as an overall matter. But they are, it is certainly a pro it's very difficult for me to see how it's not a privilege to get a lower score on the SAT than the Asian guy who's living in exactly the same circumstance. He gets penalized 50 points. You get 230 points on the SATs. That is definitionally a privilege. So there's one. Do you disagree? Yeah, but I don't want to take okay. this time, so I'm just going to let. Today we're going to go through a lot of the terms that these folks use. And these are terms that I'm sure you've heard because you're on campus, and for people who are watching online, you may have not heard these because you exist in the real world, where mommy and daddy don't pay the bills, and you're not paid to believe in the power of your dreams, and no one cares about your feelings. So, here are the terms that we're going to go through and talk about today. We're going to talk about diversity, we're going to talk about white privilege, we're going to talk about trigger warnings, we're going to talk about microaggressions, and we're going to talk about safe spaces. So the Hall of Fame of Stupidity. <laughs> Now, this exercise may in fact trigger some people, so consider this your trigger warning. I don't care how you feel. And if your feelings are hurt, I'm not sorry in any way. No. <laughs> the reason I say no, I'd be happy to let people win if they're not screaming, and the reason I say no is because it's a fire hazard, and the last time people tried to create a fire hazard, they pulled the fire alarm in the middle of the lecture. Don't give them ideas. And <laughs> I know, they don't have many of their own. How would you say that some people don't have the privilege when you basically just said that trans people aren't valid? They're not a thing. They're just girls pretending to be boys or boys pretending to be girls. Yeah. Mm, okay. The idea that, that sex or gender are malleable is not true. Okay, and I'm not denying your humanity if you're a transgender person. I am saying that you are not the sex to which you claim to be. You're still a human being, and you're a human being with an issue that I'm, you know, I wish you Godspeed in, in dealing with in whatever way you see fit. But if you are going to dictate to me that I'm supposed to pretend, I'm supposed to pretend that men are women and women are men, no. My answer is no. I'm not going to, I'm not going to modify basic biology because it threatens your subjective sense of what you are. Uh, millennials are more likely to be lean Democrat or now socialism is on the rise. How do we convey conservatism to them and uh, show them the light? What people on the, the left tend to hear from, from people on the left about politics is socialism is moral. It's the right thing to do. You're rich, that guy's poor. Wouldn't it be more moral if you were both not quite as, as polarized on the spectrum? You know, if you have $10, does it really hurt you to give up two to that guy who has $3? Aren't you both better off now? 
And the answer is, just because I exist doesn't mean I get to steal your money. We have to determine how that money got in your pocket in the first place. There's something deeply immoral to suggesting, to, to suggesting that I am owed something by you simply because I'm here and we're in the same room. Okay, that's not true. I don't know how you got your money. Maybe you worked your way up from poverty. Maybe you made a lot of money because you invented some new GMO that allowed billions of people to be fed. Right? In that case, you deserve the money. And guess what? You deserve the money in a free market economy because people were willing to engage in a voluntary transaction with you. Voluntary transactions, consent, this is the nature of capitalism. Seizure of property, seizure of wealth, force, compulsion, these are the nature of socialism.